Namaste and welcome to class. This is Backbend into Bliss. So grateful to be able to share with you. Thanks for practicing with me during this time. Practices for inner peace during turbulent times. Just a reminder to uh, please share the experience with your friends. We want to expand this out so that more and more people can find their way back to inner peace. And thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to contribute, go to ashayayoga.com and click on Practice Online. So much uh, appreciation, thank you. The Ashaya method is based on a tantric tradition <clears throat> based on co-participation. In other words, we are participating with grace. Sometimes grace leads and we follow. Sometimes we lead and grace follows. And it's also based on the path of the heart, how to follow your heart. So it takes two things to follow your heart. One is effort, your self-effort, and the other is grace, our capacity to surrender and our capacity to let go. <clears throat> And think of these two qualities as two wings of a bird. So the bird needs two wings to be able to fly and to be able to glide and to soar through the sky. So when it's just flapping the wing of effort, then it goes in a circle. If it's just flapping the wing of grace, it goes in a circle. Most of us, we're not only particip co-participating, but we're over-participating. Too much effort. So many of us, need to learn how to surrender more, how to let grace take over. You need to give it 100% of your effort. Paradoxically, you need to surrender 100%. How do you do that? It's uh, managing the paradox. It's not easy. Um, so when you have this balance of effort and grace, and by the way, when you have too much grace, too much surrender, um, you're not really taking charge of your destiny. Look. Fate is what's given to you. Destiny is what you do with it. In the Tantra, we believe that you can actually change your destiny. So we want to focus on the things we can change and let go of the things that are unchangeable. Stop trying to change your fate. You know, <laughs> you were born with the parents that you have. You can't change that. You're born in a particular geographic location. We can't change that. Um, so we let go of wasting our energy trying to change the unchangeable and put it into where you can make a difference. And that's yourself and your destiny and your life. When these two wings are balanced, effort and grace, it gives you a perspective where it's like an eagle that soars way up high. You can see uh, all the various options and um, you, your vision just increases and your heart opens and you recognize your true nature, which is true joy, true freedom. In the practice of backbends, typically we don't, we're, we're efforting in the wrong places and we're surrendering in the wrong places. So if you think of your spine, there's the legs below it and the shoulders above it. And generally, we put all the pressure on the spine and the legs are flaccid. We need to learn how to participate in the legs by engaging muscles. You engage the legs, it takes the load off the spine. Your back bend should not give you any pain in your back. And for so many of us, I mean, uh, backache is the leading uh, cause of disability uh, throughout this country. So many people have back pain. And partly, I mean, it's genetic, but also uh, it's by pl not placing enough emphasis in the right place. So we need to emphasize the legs. Uh, in today's practice, I'm going to teach you how to effort the legs, and not over-efforting, but we're going to engage the legs to reduce the load on the spine. That means the pressure on the discs of the spine so that the spine can be free. So we're too surrendered in the legs. You have to engage. You have to amp it up. And we're too overly protected around the heart. So we need to learn how to soften the heart, melt the heart, release protection. And the way we, we learn how to let go in the heart is by taking the head of the arm bones back. You have to effort. It's, I love this practice, it's so paradoxical. And we learn how to do two opposite things. We're trying to you know, understand the contrast and make contrast complementary. 
When that happens, you go to the place of balance, place in the midline, which is called the Madhya, which is this gateway to the bliss. And that's what we're going for. Your true nature is bliss. It's ananda, is, is the Sanskrit word for that. And bliss is just everyone's born with it. It's just that we lose it and we forget about it and we get involved in uh, so much strain and suffering. And part of it is just we learned unskillful habits and we practice them our whole life. That's why our back hurts. So in this class, we're gonna undo, we're gonna unlearn and then relearn the um, more optimal way of using your body such that your back bends feel really joyous. For this practice, uh, I am going to move to a segment of the class where you're going to need a chair, um, I mean, any kind of chair, and then a bolster or two stacked blankets so we can um, get that kind of support. Okay, take a comfortable seat. Turn your thigh bones in. Draw down through your tailbone. Join your index fingers and thumbs, palms down. Close your eyes, tune into your breath, and open to grace. With each exhalation, release any stress or worry or anxiety. Set your sails. The winds of grace are always blowing, but you have to set your sails. Lengthen your side ribs from your hips all the way up to your armpits. Then take the head of your arm bones back and melt the heart. Lift your throat, draw your palate back. Lift the back of your skull slightly up. Bring your head in line with your heart, in line with your pelvis. Ashaya is the integration of body, mind, and heart. We use all the tools given to us to learn how to find our way back to the heart, to the abode of the heart. Ashaya means abode means refuge, sanctuary, the place where we come to find inner peace, ease, a kind of serenity. So draw in. And then breathe into your heart. Set your intention for today's practice. If nothing else, just to learn how to balance the upper and lower body be able to do back bends with a little more ease. Back bends are so beneficial. It increases circulation to the spine. It elevates our emotions. It picks us up out of depression into a state of balance and even elation. It increases endorphin activity and releases the feel-good hormones. And we come to understand that the spine, the central channel, is the house of our nervous system. Back bends engorges the spine with a rich supply of oxygen and blood, which benefits the brain, which regulates blood pressure. So when you work with the spine, you're working with your entire nervous system. Especially during times of challenge, our nervous system gets tired, it gets shot. So we are in survival mode. Recognize it. Remember that this hour of practice is your time to come home to yourself, to let go of efforting so hard and worrying to try to make things happen faster than they will. Instead, come into the present moment, surrender, accept whatever is happening, see if you can make peace with whatever is happening in your life. This is the true yogi. And then bring your palms together in front of your heart. Imagine one palm effort, one palm grace, like the two wings coming together. And find the point of balance deep in the threshold. And let's offer a prayer for ease, comfort, and bliss to all those practicing today. Connect your heart to the hearts of all those listening. We'll take a deep breath and chant Om. 
to standing and take a block. First technique is pelvic integration. So put the block, the short end pointing in the front between the upper inner thighs. I call this the Pez dispenser. Here's your Pez. Hands are on your hips, feet parallel, lift your toes. The sense of effort, just the right amount, hug the block. Then move your thigh bones back. That creates a curve in the back. Keeping your thighs back, draw your tailbone down, belly in and up. That lengthens the curve. And then bring your palms in front in prayer position. Lift your side ribs and then head of the arm bones go back. Now you got to make some efforts here to get the arm bones back. And as soon as your arm bones go back, relax your heart. And then inhale, sweep your arms out to the side and up overhead. And exhale, go at the rhythm of your own breath, palms in front. Continue several breaths. And as you move this way, work your thighs back, tailbone in. From your pelvis now, root down to the uh, four corners of your feet, and from your pelvis, rise. Coordinate the movement with your breath. I call this the sun breath. When you inhale, you can look up towards your hands, and then exhale. Very good. One more. Inhale, lift up. And then exhale, fold forward into Uttanasana. Squeeze the block. Effort the legs, but surrender the heart. Now keep your legs engaged and lift your heart halfway forward. And then exhale, bow. Imagine two wings on your heart. And inhale, fly your heart forward, but keep your legs strong. Exhale, bow. Relax your neck, your head, your face. Inhale, heart forward. And exhale, bow. Well done. Move down through your feet, sweep your arms out to the side, inhale, come all the way up, and then exhale, palms in front of your heart. Remove the block, but keep it handy, we'll be using it again. Inhale, stretch up. Now without the block, take your thighs back, tailbone in, and then exhale, fold. Inhale, heart forward, Exhale, right leg back, lunge. Squeeze your legs in toward the middle. Let's work our legs here. So lift your fingers two inches off the floor and balance. Your effort is needed. But we don't want to over effort. So as soon as you, as you're squeezing your legs strong, keep your face soft. Curl the corners of your mouth towards your ears. Hey, you got this. And then... Touch the floor, lift your back thigh. This is thighs back. T draw your tailbone in, left hip goes back and down. Then lower your right knee down to the floor, hands to your hips, scissor your legs. Inhale, stretch up. Our first back bend, exhale. Bend the left knee more. Left knee over the toes, beyond the toes. But pull your right knee forward isometrically. And as you pull this whole uh, back structure forward, your muscles engage. The top of the thigh goes back. Then pull your tailbone in, low belly up. We need to have abdominal strength to support the front of the spine for our back bends. Then exhale, bring your arms down, hands to your hips. We're going to arch back a bit. Reach your right hand back to your right thigh. Stretch your left arm up. Continue to go a little deeper into the pose and breathe. Now, take your left arm straight out in front. Pull the armpit back, lift your arm, and then curl back. Hug your shoulder blades more into the back of your ribs. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale, sweep your arms out to the side and touch 
Go back to downward facing dog pose. Even in downward dog, can you get a low back curve? Well, try this. Bend your knees a ton. Move your knees wider than your little toes. And then spin your inner thighs up toward the sky. Instead of collapsing your shoulders down, which is typical in downward dog, that tightens the heart. Isn't that interesting? Like we've been doing it the reverse all the time. Engage your arms and lift your armpits up. That's the effort needed. And then surrender your heart toward the floor. Lift your sitting bones more. Then begin to work your heels toward the floor. You're going to alternately bend one knee and then the other. Let's get the calves, the Achilles tendons, that's right on the back of the ankle, to stretch. Nice, deep breaths. Okay, then bend both knees, lift your sitting bones, root your heels toward the floor. Downward dog, back bend. Lift your armpits up as you lower your head toward the floor. See if you can bring your, the top of your head all the way down to the floor. But resist your armpits up. It looks like they're collapsing, but they're not. You're, you really are engaging. You engage the shoulder muscles. Very good for the um, upper back stretch. Okay. And exhale, right foot forward. Lift your fingers a couple inches, hold. Squeeze your legs. Effort, how much effort is needed? Oh, 100%, okay, but not 110%. You're doing more than your share. Get rid of that 10%. Just 100. How soft should your eyes be and face be? Oh, 100% relaxed. Keep the actions of your legs. Bring your hands down. Lift your left thigh, so thighs back. Take the right hip back and down. So curve and then length. Exhale, lower your left knee. And come up, hands to your hips. Hug your legs. Drag your left knee forward isometrically. And here we go. We start to bend the right knee more. And it should come out in line with your toes, even beyond your toes. Thighs back, tailbone in. Stretch your arms up. As you exhale now, surrender a bit more. And then from your pelvis, just push down through your legs and let the rebound action lift up through your heart. So we're gonna use earth as a platform where we can effort in order to get more springiness into the spine. So the more you root, the more you're gonna be able to lift and rise. Hug in all around the spine, hug your arms, and then left hand comes back to your left thigh. Bring your right arm halfway down, pull the armpit back, effort, and then reach up. Breathe. Every inhalation, engage a little more. Effort a little more. Every exhalation, where could you surrender? How could you relax and release a little more? Neck follows the natural curve of your spine. Pallet back, occiput up. Curl back, arch back. And then left arm up. And exhale, release and touch. Go back to plank. And then chaturanga, hold chaturanga, bring your thighs back, tailbone in. Good, super strong. If you have to bring your knees down, go ahead. Come on, let me see your bicep muscles. <laughs> hold it, come on. Okay, exhale all the way down. All right, bring your palms under your shoulders, you're gonna Claw the floor and pull back. That's your effort. Make your side ribs lift, head of the arm bones back. Squeeze your legs toward the middle as well. And then inhale. Come up. Exhale. Down. Clasp your hands behind your back. Stretch back. And inhale. Come up. 
Toes are straight back. Hug your shins. Exhale down, place your hands, cobra again. Come up. This time, look over your right shoulder. Salamander, crawl your right knee forward. Roll onto your left hip. Flex your left foot and push your left foot back, left ribs forward. Breathe. Really move your left ribs forward while you push your left foot back. Exhale down. Inhale, cobra, look over your left shoulder and crawl your left knee forward. And then flex your right foot and push your right foot back, right ribs forward. Try to find a line of effort through your right foot and right ribs. But then right in the midline, that's where your heart is, soften. Exhale, release. Okay, come up onto all fours. Take your block and put your block between your ankles. Okay, and I've got mine on, on the narrow, narrow side. And then come back onto your belly. So I want you to squeeze a block between your feet or your ankles. Okay. Can you stretch your toes straight back and still hold the block? Okay, palms in front. So this is cobra working your legs. Remember I said the legs are just sort of jello-like? Okay, so squeeze the block. Now your legs are totally firm. Do you feel it? Squeeze, that's the effort I'm talking about. Thighs back, tailbone in. And then inhale, come up, squeeze the block. This should remove all pressure, takes the load off the low back. Another thing is like if you just pop up too fast or too high, that's gonna um, give you too much curve. Remember, it's always curve in length. So lower down a bit. Now squeeze your legs, squeeze the block. Very good. Pull up from the feet to the pelvis. That's the kind of effort. Claw with your finger pads and the roots. Head of the arm bones back, shoulder blades curl in the back of the heart. Tailbone in, okay, keep all that. So you can go up more with zero pressure on your spine. I want you to get all the pressure in your legs and your butt. And exhale down. Well done. All fours. Now, move the block and you're gonna put it in the upper inner thigh area. But um, don't let the top of the thigh, a block come forward of your thighs. So the um, front of the block is flush with your thighs. And then come lie down again. Okay? So now squeeze the block. Okay, this is a little different. You still have to work your toes, but squeeze your thighs. Clasp your hands behind your back. And just come up a little bit. Squeeze the block. Clasp your hands, stretch your elbows straight back. Then take the head of your arm bones back more. Exhale down. Table. Remove your block. And then come back down. Come onto your forearms now. Curl your toes under. Remember how I said you gotta strengthen your abdominal muscles? So this is a xiphoid tailbone connection. Lift your knees. Xiphoid is the base of the rib cage in front, connected to the back of the um, end of the spine. The tailbone is the bottom of the spine. Pull them together, knees off. And then push into your forearms and lift your hips. Forearm plank. Hold, pull your ribs in. Melt the back of the heart as best you can, but you have to work your thighs back, tailbone in. And breathe. Pull your navel toward your spine.
and then stir the pot. Make a circle with your heart. Try to keep your shoulders steady. You're just moving your heart. Hips are also very steady. Circle in the opposite direction. Now, pull your ribs in. Don't let them float down. They have to pull in. I know they're floating ribs, but float them up. And exhale. Release. Child's pose. Big toes touch, knees a little wide, head down. Take a couple of breaths. So we've just increased circulation, really, um, around the whole body. It's wonderful. All right, inhale, come up to standing. Take a wide stance. Square your left foot to the back edge, turn your right foot open. Squeeze your legs and then exhale. Bring your forearm down on your thigh. Parsva Kanasana. Widen your stance a bit more. And then if you can go down to the floor, you're going to go to the inside of your right foot. So hand over to the left. And as you lean towards the left more, stick your butt way back and then tailbone in. You can have a block under your right hand as needed. And then walk your hand to the inside of the foot and begin to arch back. So pull your thighs back, then tailbone in, and then curl the heart over your front leg. Stretch your left arm straight up, and then bring the left arm over your ear. Emphasize now the back bend. Keep your tail strong, arch back. Kind of roll your belly and your heart up. Very good. Then put your left hand on your hip and inhale. Come back up, straighten your right leg. Turn your feet to face straight ahead. Now square your right foot, turn your left foot open, squeeze your legs, forearm on your left thigh. And then thighs back, tailbone in. Bring your left hand out to the right, in front of you a little bit. Now you can get your thigh bones to go back, tail in. Walk your hand to the inside, edge of the right foot on the floor, on a block, and shoulder against your knee. And then stretch your right arm straight up. And we're gonna try to Arch back and curl back. Keep your tailbone strong. Arch back. And then stretch your right arm over your ear. Breathe. Curl back. Roll your heart more up to the sky. Bring your head back a little bit. Down through your feet. Inhale, come up. Turn your feet again to the other side. Right foot open. Both legs straight, hinge. Just keep your hands on your hips and you're gonna push into your right hip. There's the hinge, right in the joint itself. Keep your legs strong. And then trikonasana, reach your right hand over to the left, bend forward, and then stick your butt back. Roll your thighs in, inner edges of the sitting bones go back and they blossom. Yes, blossom the buttocks. Then draw your tail in, walk your hand to, let's go to the outside of the right shin, and then stretch your left arm up. Now we're going to arch back a bit. Walk your right hand further away to the right, so your right hand's almost off your mat. And begin to arch back. So go into, it's like a triangle back bend. And you should feel lots of stretch along the left, front of the left hip. Arch back. You can have a block under your right hand. Pull back, arch back. Open up the heart more. Very good. Root your legs and inhale. Come up, hands to your hips. Feet to the other side, left foot open. Hug, hinge your left hip. And then bring 
your left hand over to the right. The reason why we get the torso to go toward the right here is called the seesaw effect. So when you move one end forward, the other end goes back. We want the hips to go back. So your left hand's on the floor, or on a block, stick your butt back a lot, and then walk your left hand to the outside of the left shin, tailbone in, stretch your right arm. Keeping your legs steady, a good amount of effort in the legs, tailbone is strong, walk your left hand back and arch back. Left hand is almost off the mat, actually my fingers are off the mat. And head back, arch back, right shoulder back. And you wanna lean back almost until you fall back, but your legs hold you, your tailbone is in. Breathe. Enjoy a perspective of a back bend from Trikonasana pose. Who knew? Okay, we're down through your feet. Inhale, come up. Turn your feet to center and step your feet back together. Okay, let's get the quads open. So we'll do maybe two or three more. Come down onto all fours. Bring your right knee into pigeon. Right knee over toward the right hand. And then bend your left knee and bring your heel towards your hip. Press the base of your left thigh down. Drag forward, tailbone in. Drag forward, tailbone in. And then turn to face the front and work your ribs from left to right so they're square in front. Good, switch. Left knee forward, square your hips. Bend the back knee, hold your ankle and bring your heel towards your hip. Root the base of your right thigh down, drag forward, tailbone in. Drag forward, tailbone in. Belly in and up. And then ribs have to turn to the front, which means you're going to twist from right to left. Heavy arm bones back. You should feel this all, all the way down your right thigh, from your right hip down to the right knee. Big, deep breaths. Good, line your belly. Bend both knees. Take hold of your ankles. Pause for a moment and breathe. Draw into the inner peace, even amidst chaos. Here's some sounds from India. Press your feet back into your hands and come up Dhanurasana. Now, hug your thighs toward each other, toward the midline. Lift your side ribs, shoulders back. Spread your toes. These are the conch shells and the bells from Chidambaram, India. It's where Nataraja dances. That's where I was going when my trip got canceled. Well. Exhale down. Come on to your back. Take a block. And we're going to put the block between the thighs, just like the Pez. And bridge. So bend your elbows. But right by your sides, palms parallel. Walk your feet in, feet parallel. Squeeze the block. And then move the block down towards the floor. Your low back gets a curve. Draw your tail in, lift your hips up. 
pull from your feet up into your palate. From your palate, extend through your thighs. So we want all the pressure now to be in the legs. So squeeze the block, effort. Hug your shoulder blades and curl them into the back of the heart, effort. The face is soft, the heart itself filled with grace. Perfect amount of effort and grace here. Helps the heart to fly. Lift your hips a little more, but now as your hips go up, move your block down. Hips up, block down. And then exhale, release. Enjoy. Let me show you a couple ways to get up into the full back bend of a Dhanurasana. So you're going to take your blankets or bolster and unfold them so they're the wide length. Fold it once in half so you get them long. So you can see I've made a little bolster for myself right here. Place that about in the middle of your mat. And then you take a chair and you place it about three or four inches behind. You may have to adjust as we get into it. You want your chair on your sticky mat or against a wall so it's not gonna slide. Sit on the edge of your mat. Lean back as so your head is just off the roll. Take hold of the uh, chair like this. So maybe you can just watch me once. So you have to be careful of your head in the chair. And I'm going to root the chair down, bring my elbows in, and effort my armpits toward the floor. So you have to pull in. Then hips come up. And then I'm going to push the chair into the floor so it doesn't move and then try to get my legs to go, uh, arms to go straight. Now, if your chair is against the wall, that's better because it's not gonna move. I'm gonna come down, so try that. The action you wanna focus on is continue to keep your arm bones back while you come up. And you gotta plug the chair down into the earth as you come up. Head is back, keep your feet parallel. Okay, and release. And another way to work this, you can use the bolsters as well, but we're gonna go to a wall so I'll just demonstrate here. I'm gonna slide up to this wall, my door, and the blocks are gonna be at a 45 degree angle, wedged right onto the blanket, shoulder distance apart. Then I'm gonna place my hands on the block. So you lie down either on the bolster, you could do that again. Head is between the blocks. Turn your fingers toward the wall, elbows up. So this 45 degrees is gonna help give you more strength in your wrists. Typically it's a 90 degree arch. Lift your side ribs, head of the arm bones back, hips up, chest up, push onto the blocks and go up. Then once you're up, your heart goes toward the wall. You have to really pull your tailbone in. Exhale, tuck your chin, come down onto your shoulders, and then hips down. Very good. All right. Pull your mat back. And then please 
Stand, fold forward, Uttanasana. And then twist to the right. Hold your right shin with your left hand, left hip back. And then twist to your left shin. Exhale, bend your knees, come down. Take a comfortable seated position. Rearrange your sitting blankets. Come take a comfortable seat. Manually turn your thigh bones in. Join your index fingers and thumbs. And then grow your spine long. You can feel and sense, wow, you have so much more openness now, especially in the front of your body. We open the legs, we open the hips, we put energy into the spine with good technique. Then take the head of your arm bones back, pal it back, and sit upright. Close your eyes. You can do a few minutes of meditation and then Shavasana. Become aware of your breath and let the breath flow gently in and out. Stay with your breath without anticipating the breath before it comes, without forcing the breath. In fact, now's the time to surrender to the breath itself. Let the rhythm of the breath kind of lull you into a state of being completely supported by the life force itself until you can sense that the breath is breathing you. We'll practice mantra meditation. The mantra we'll use is a Maha Mantra, great mantra, one of the most uh, in-depth and widely used tantric mantra. And it's called Ham Sa, H-A-M-S-A. Ham means I am, and Sa means that. It means the vastness of the universe itself. So it is a very powerful affirmation, but we're not so concerned with the definition of the mantra is the mantra practice offers an experience. First, we coordinate hum with the inhalation and sa with the exhalation. You mentally think hum when you inhale and mentally, silently, you think sa on the exhalation. Permit the small gaps between the breaths and take your time, there's no rush. Initially, you'll place the hamsa more in the forefront of your consciousness, but as you practice, you want to allow the mantra itself to penetrate and start to shift its location from surface to inner depths. And then spatially in your awareness, it's like the front of the head, and it starts to descend towards the middle of the head. This deepening of the mantra is not something that you can make happen. You simply allow through capacity to surrender, which is a state of non-expectation, and you allow it to happen.
after some time of practice, you allow the mantra to disengage from the breath. You may keep the rhythm with the breath, but ultimately hamsa is independent of the breath rhythm. And then it remains simply as a thought. To repeat the mantra. Continue to let go and let grace. If other thoughts arise, go back to the mantra. among all the different thoughts, feelings, and moods that are already present. Make the mantra brighter. And there's so many things we do to make this meditation really hard. It's very easy, very natural. So let up on the effort of the mantra. Don't try so hard. If you've lost the mantra, come back to the breath. Remember the balance between effort and grace. Yes, there's a little bit of effort. You have to stimulate the thought of the mantra. That's you. But think of it as effortless effort. Make space for grace. Now allow the mantra to become more delicate. Almost feathery. couple minutes of meditation, allow your whole physical body to melt. When you align your body, the bones actually are what hold you in place. Minimal muscular effort to sit. We want to get to a place where we no longer even notice the body. It's so effortless. And the flow between body, mind, and heart becomes steady. A unification of integration. The result of this mantra practice is you open up a vast spaciousness. It's like a spacious luminosity. It's clear, pristine, and so enjoyable.
palms together in front of your heart and release the mantra. Offer a gentle bow and come lie down on your back. Shavasana. practice of mantra meditation using heart seed mantras, which is the kind of mantra we use in a silent practice. Hamsa is one of them. Actually heats up the mind. There's a certain amount of friction and transformation that generates tapas or heat. Although it's an effortless practice, it's generating a very strong purificatory effect. So it's very important to lie down after you do mantra practice, just for a few minutes, to let your whole system cool down let you rest in silence. the place between effort and grace now, where they come together, where the individual and universal touch, where they acknowledge each other. The infinite seeks the finite to be known. And the finite appreciates the limitless quality of the infinite. They reach for each other in a divine embrace. Receive the blessing of inner peace in the form of your breath. And breathe all the way down to your fingers, all the way down to your toes, and then move fingers and toes you're giving inner peace legs, inner peace embodied 
in you. As you're ready, gently stretch. Take a deeper inhalation, deeper exhalation. And draw your knees in towards your chest, roll to your right side. As you're ready, come up to a seated position. Sit tall and strong. Close your eyes and draw in to the part of you that is invincible. Draw into the part of you that is infused with the power of the entire universe. This power of grace, your capacity to let go and flow with what is. Allow your own individual longing for freedom to become your power, to express effort combined with grace, 100% effort and 100% grace, so that you move through your life guided by spirit, but infused by the strength of your own individual conviction to heal, to serve, to have a beautiful, meaningful, rich, fulfilled life. Let that be expressed unabashedly through your day. Please bring your palms together in front. Let's connect our hearts, our own individual heart with each other's hearts and the heart of the world the heart of spirit in each individual. And let's fuse effort and grace together and soar like an eagle today. Take a breath and we'll chant home. in me bows to the grace in you. Namaste.